Nurture can be fate and nature can be malleable. If only we could come up with secular science. What we're saying is heritability is an index of educational opportunity. Hello and welcome to How We Became Who We Are. Now, stressing the importance of heredity is something generally associated with the right and focusing on environmental factors with the left. Yet many on the right care greatly about environmental factors such as schooling for their children, while those on the left want to describe racists as evil and not excuse their behaviour on the basis of how they were brought up. So to avoid this hypocrisy, should we excise politics from the nature-nurture debate? Should we focus on the new data coming from twin studies that identifies the huge impact of heredity on outcomes we've traditionally thought environmental? Or is this a dangerous theory with such damaging consequences for society that it shouldn't be given airtime at all? Well, we've got a fantastic panel lined up for you here today. Matt Ridley is the author of Nature via Nurture and Genome and was previously the science editor of The Economist. Yasmin Alibai Brown is a renowned journalist whose work regularly appears in newspapers such as The Guardian, The Times, The New York Times and The Mail. And Robert Plowman is an eminent psychologist and geneticist and author of Blueprint, How DNA Makes Us Who We Are. Now, as you know, we're going to have a pitch, a three minute pitch from each of the panelists uh, on the question, should we excise politics from the nature nurture debate? And I'm going to start with you, Matt. Thank you very much, Marianne. Uh, And should we excise politics from the nature debate? Yes, if we can, but I'm not hopeful in this highly polarized world. Uh, I wrote a whole book, as you said, called Nature Via Nurture. And the depressing thing about that was that almost nobody notices the middle word. Um, I still go on radio shows and people say, oh yes, you wrote a book called Nature Versus Nurture and the book's sitting in front of them. <laughs> so um, it's, it's, it's a problem this, um, trying to be a brave for the middle ground here. Talking of bravery, if I say brave new world to you, what springs to mind? Well, for most people, a a novel by um, Aldous Huxley of a dystopia based on too much nature, too much belief in heredity. But, you know, go back and read the book. It's not like that. It's actually a book about too much nurture. It's about children being uh, drugged from childhood in such a way that they end up being different from the others. It's not about innateness at all. It's about nurture, very cruel nurture. And uh, nurture can be just as cruel as nature. Show me Hitler and Mengele and I'll show you Stalin and Lysenko. Um, So the idea that nature and nurture are alternatives poisoned a lot of debates in the 20th century. And I hope it doesn't have to poison debates in the 21st because it is not a zero sum thing. It's not a spectrum from one to the other. And it's not one as an alternative to another. Indeed, as William James said right at the start of the debate, and I think I wish we'd listened to this more, the more nurture you have, the more nature you need to have it and vice versa. Here's an example. Monkeys are not innately afraid of snakes. A monkey born in the lab shown a snake uh, for the first time is not frightened of it. But it's much easier to teach a monkey fear of snakes than to teach it fear of flowers. And this was the result of a brilliant experiment by Susan Minaker in which she dubbed a video so that the monkey saw another monkey being frightened of a snake, but actually she'd put a flower over the snake on the video so the monkey thought the other monkey was terrified of flowers. And all it learnt was that some monkeys are bonkers. The more we lift the lid on genes, the more we find that they are actually open to experience. They take their cues from what happens to us. If you remember this talk that I'm giving right now, it will be because inside your brain cells, genes are being switched on and off for fractions of a second to alter the strength of connections between nerve cells to lay down a new, new memory. That's what genes are actually doing. They're they're often um, literally turning on and off during our lifetimes, and they're at the mercy of what happens to us. So nurture can be fate, and nature can be malleable. And 
as Marianne said, the idea that the left believes in nurture while the right believes in nature, I think is just plain empirically wrong if you look at what people actually do, because the left believes in tapping talent among underprivileged people, finding the bright kid and giving her opportunity. And that only makes sense if you believe there are such things as bright kids. Whereas the right only believes in edu or the right believes in education, and that only makes sense if you think nurture is necessary as well as nature. Uh, or to put it more bluntly, as someone said to me, professors are inclined to attribute the intelligence of their children to nature and of their students to nurture. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay, so Yasmin, should we excise politics from the nature-nurture debate? Yes, I, I, I absolutely think um, uh, we should, but of course it's not going to be it's not going to be happening, is it? Because everything is connected to politics. I I, I was thinking of a of a of, of an example. For me, if only we could come up with secular science, a secular state where where you know we've separated religion and politics. If we could separate science from politics in the same way, do you know what I mean? that actually make it impossible for, for politics to influence science the way it's done for such a long time, to secularize science. But increasingly, I think, we, we see the opposite trend where politics is infiltrating almost everything. Um, and, 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 and politicizing this particular debate has done no one any good, no, neither the left nor the right. Um, it... it it's, I mean, one thing I'd like to know from the two experts later is whether we are hardwired, for example, to be left or right. How is it that in the same family, you know, in my family, my brother was incredibly right wing and always was, and I was incredibly left wing. You know, I don't know where the hardwiring begins, but so... Unsavory politics and politicians will always use um, uh, nature nurture. Let me tell you what, just in the last um, uh, three weeks, these are the statements I've had said to me or emailed to me or um, on social media. Indian, these were actual statements. Indians learn fast, but have no invention cannot invent anything. Africans have invented nothing. The poor, the poor are evolving out, thank God. Mm. Middle class people are born to be confused and will never get anywhere. Now, we're listening to, I'm hearing this in the 21st century. Uh, mm. How can that not be utterly depressing? I think we do need, I think both, both uh, uh, my fellow panelists are absolutely right to talk in, to, to try and break this binary, to see it as stupid and dangerous. But I just fear that, we've, that, the, that that divide of left and right and nature nurture, we even had a little argument in our household last night, um, because as soon as I started talking about, you know, it's a bit of both, there are, you know, people who think, no, once you start talking about it, that's dangerous. Great. So, Robert, your pitch on whether we should excise politics from the nature-nurture debate. Yes, well, I have a decidedly old-fashioned view as a scientist that, as a scientist, you try to be as objective as possible and not to let your values enter into the work you do. Your work is supposed to be replicable and all of that. And I know a lot of people disagree and increasingly um, there's a group called Science um, uh, for the People. The idea that, you know, science should be driven by what some people think ought to be good for people. I mean, you know, and genetics is usually considered not to be good for people. But I think as much as we can keep the science separate from the politics is good. Politics involves policies, and policies are not necessarily related to scientific information. You know, I'll take the big one first, the heritability of learning ability. It is 
substantially heritable, maybe about 50% heritable, meaning individual differences between children and how they learn can be attributed substantially to inherited DNA differences. This is very different from what Matt and to some extent Yasmin were talking about with innateness and what happens at the level of the human species and how we evolve. 99% of our 3 billion base pairs of DNA are the same for all of us. That's what makes us human. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.